And welcome back. I'm finally here to talk to you about the new uh, Tamron 18 to 300 millimeter f3.5 to 6.3 di 3a VC VXD, meaning the all-around lens from uh, from Tamron that was already available for. Uh, Sony mount, but now it's available for uh, Fuji as well. And let me start uh, by saying that I've always been a big Tamron fan since uh, the days back in the DSLR era. Uh, that's because I remember how good uh, the lens that I had from them were from the 70-300 to the 70-200 f2.8 on my D700 back in the days. And those lenses were performing very well and I was very uh, happy uh, with the quality cost ratio that the, these lenses were able to, to pro provide. So that um, intrigued me when finally Tamron started making lenses for the Fujifilm mount. Of course though, what I remember was more than a decade ago and things may change and, uh, and so my curiosity was to test what, Len, what Tamron was capable of doing, considering also that being uh, 10 and more years later, technology has, has moved forward. So I had high hopes for this lens uh, to be uh, an overall good performer that would be basically replacing all of my lenses when I was going on hikes and stuff like that. I was not planning to use this lens for any professional use because of, I know that a lens like this is going to be a compromise. So uh, this was not my goal. Um, and looking at others' review, especially for the Sony mount, but now uh, some of the reviews have been out also for Fuji, all of the people were praising this lens. So my hope kept getting higher and higher and higher, but me being me, I don't trust anybody and I wanted to try it for myself. As I said, my intent was to have that one lens to rule them all for my hiking and my excursions and my one day long uh, walking thing that uh, would allow me to have just one lens and get everything done. Of course, again, um, accepting some, some of the compromise that a lens like, like this uh, definitely has to involve because there's no way a lens like this is going to be perfect. So it would be stupid to expect a lens like this to be per perfect. Things, however, didn't go as planned. As you've learned from the title, I'm returning this lens. And if you want to know why, stick with me to the end of the video because I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna drive you uh, to my uh, decision on this lens, uh, explaining you what works and what doesn't work for me with this specific lens. Speaking of build quality, the build quality of this lens, in my opinion, but this is my opinion, is not bad at all. It is above average when it comes to third-party um, do-it-all lenses. It's, it's made of plastic, but it's a good plastic. It doesn't feel like it's creeping on you. It doesn't feel like it's going to break on you easily. It's got, um, it feels very solid in the hands. There's not much to complain about it. Of course, a lens like this has to extend while zooming, but as you see, yes, it does extend, but it doesn't extend too much. And so it is ma manageable. The good thing is that the zoom requires quite some effort to move, so you're not having any creep or anything while, uh, while you're working or anything like, like that. And if you're worried about it, what you have is a lock, over here that doesn't allow the lens to move uh, when you're at 18 mill mill millimeters. So uh, overall, um, I'm very pleased with the build quality of this lens, which is also moisture resistant. That's what Tamron says. Uh, it's got a gasket when it's at the at this level here, the bi bi level. Um, it's got internal focusing. It is stabilized. It it's got the new VXD auto focusing system, and Honestly, for the price and the focal range, it's very hard to ask for more than what this lens gives you when it comes to, to um, build, build, build quality. I can really complain about it. And 
silly, but I also like the matte finish that you have. It's not shiny, it's not glossy, it's nothing. Uh, uh, it's just, I like it. Of course, it's not uh, a masterpiece, but it's more than what you would expect from a lens like this at the price that this lens has, which is uh, around 800 euros, at least here in Europe. I don't remember in dollars. Image quality is why I'm re returning this lens, because I know this lens is a super zoom, and a super zoom lens has to have has to be compromised there's no there's no way around it so i did not expect stellar uh result i did not expect stellar sharpness i didn't did not expect incredible bokeh i did not expect the overall image quality to come even close to the 16 to 80 the 18 to 120 or the 70 to 300 that i already own i did not expect any of that so i was ready to accept something worse than I actually have. However, I did not expect results to be uh, so bad. I mean, I, I rarely use this term, but in my experience, results that I got with this lens are bad. To the point that I started questioning myself whether I needed to give it another try with another uh, sample because maybe the lens is flawed. Honestly, I don't think the lens is flawed. In my test, this lens can barely resolve the 26 megapixel sensor of the X-H2S, and it can do it in a limited focal range. We'll, we'll get to it in a second, but it's not even capable of resolving the overall, sharp, the overall resolution of the sensor throughout the entire zooming range. The lens performs best in the focal range that goes between 18 and 80 millimeters, where the center is decent and corners are, are lagging a little bit behind and get a little bit better as you stop down, but not too much. In this range, on a 26 megapixel camera, you can get this acceptable result, something that you would be able to use for like normal, non-professional, non-professional use. The problem is that this you buy this lens to get past the 80 millimeters, okay? You get you get this lens because you want to be able to shoot between 18 and 300 millimeters. Now you would expect 300 not to be the best, and it's definitely not, but you would expect to be able to use at least without any issue something like an 80 to 200 millimeter uh, zooming range. Forget about it. The lens, as you get past 100 millimeters, starts uh, losing sharpness quite dramatically. And even on the 26 me megapixel sensors, there's no way you're going to get a sharp result. On top of that, at 80 millimeter, the lens is already f5. So if I compare this to what I have with the 16 to 80 or the 18 to 120, which are both f4 constant uh, aperture lenses, it means that I can get decent result in basically the same range, actually in a, sh in a shorter range if I compare with the 18 to 120, and I have a slower lens because it's f5 compared to f4 when I'm going at the telephoto end, with uh, worse results and overall worse image quality. And so you gotta ask yourself, why would I accept any of that if I have to restrict myself to just less than half of the uh, focusing focusing range? To me, it doesn't it doesn't make too much sense. I started questioning whether I was doing something wrong with the lens. If it was the stabilization that was introducing this mushiness that I was seeing, I started under, trying to understand if it was the autofocus that was not working because. What I, the issue that I had with the 18 to 120 maybe was translating on this. So I started manual focusing, I turned everything off, I put everything on a tripod, but result didn't change at all. Let alone shooting on a 40 megapixel sensor. That is not even something you can think about. 40 megapixel, the lens cannot resolve at any of the focal length 
that, that, it, that it covers. So if you're shooting on an X-T5, X-H2, forget about this lens. If you're shooting on a lower megapixel uh, count camera, you can, but th those are the limitations. All the rest, meaning uh, chromatic aberration, is kind of well controlled for, the, for what the uh, zooming range is. Same goes for the bokeh. It's not something to write home about, but it's decent. It's acceptable. It's actually better than I would have expected. Um, vignetting is there. It never really goes away, but it's not too bad. Um, in general, all the other aspects of the lens are not bad. You can get fairly close uh, to your subject at 18 millimeters. You get a 1 to 2 magnification ratio, although you got to be uh, careful because basically at that point you're touching your subject with the front element of the lens and that introduces a little bit of lighting lightning lighting issues because you can shade the subject from the light if you get in too close overall what is basically uh killing this lens is sharpness sharpness is not good enough in my opinion to be used uh on a regular basis. Again, I don't want to restrict myself on a lower quality lens for a longer range that I cannot use for the vast majority of it. So that's basically what is killing this lens from my from my uh, point point of view. My testing. It's not been bad at all. I mean, it was um, acceptably fast, silent. The lack of sharpness didn't allow me to test if it's precise or not, because at times you cannot even tell if the lens is in focus or not, or if it's just lack of sharpness. And so the autofocus to me was decently good, but I cannot tell you much more than that because at, the point, at that point, I was already uh, not interested in testing this lens any further because uh, it's not, to me, it's not worth it. I really wanted to like this lens. I really wanted it because it would have solved a lot of problems. Because if I did like this lens, if I did like this lens for real, I would have had one lens that would cover for my hiking purposes from wide angle, well, not super wide, but wide, to the telephoto end, and it would cover me for both the landscape shots and also sometimes you find animals at some distance and you need that zooming cap cap capabilities. Lately, I've been using the 70 to 300 together with the 16 to 80, but it's, I'm bringing two lenses, I need to change lenses, and in the time that I'm changing lenses, the animal may have uh, gone, they may have been gone already. So the convenience that I was expecting to get from this lens is what sold me in the idea of buying it. However, as I said, as you, if you watched the rest of the video, uh, this lens is not the solution for me. As mentioned, it is usable on a low megapixel camera in a limited range, only up to 80, from 18 to 80 to 100 millimeters. And at, the, at that point, it makes no sense to prefer this over the 16 to 80 or the 18 to 120, because they're uh, at that point, they are even faster at f4 rather than f5 and better in any uh, way, shape, or four. So I'll stick with the 18 to 120. This means that I probably need to bring the 70 to 300 at times when I think I'm gonna be uh, seeing animals at a distance, which is what I didn't want to do. But again, image quality, I was ready to compromise, but not up to this point. I'd like to know more from you because if you have this lens and if you have not experienced what I've did, that may uh, that may mean that my copy was not uh, a good one. And I'd like to know that because if that's true, I may want to give it another try, although I'm not willing to pay twice and I'm not willing to risk to be disappointed again. But I'm really interested in your comments and I'm also uh, letting you know that in my next video, we're going to talk about 
another third party lens, the Sigma 6, the 18 to 50 f uh, 2.8, which is super small. It surprised me, but that's for that's for another video, and it seems very pro promising. So stay stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment uh, down below. Leave me a like if you like this video. Give me two dislike if you didn't like the video. And I think this went longer than I wanted, but that's it for today. Ciao, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.